Live from the ESPN 1280 studios in San Luis Obispo, it is time. It is Living the Run. We're not just chewing the fat, we're getting rid of it. We are your home for everything health and fitness. Living the Run is being brought to you by Running Warehouse, CrossFit Grover Beach, Artie's Pilates, and in partnership with the American Cancer Society and the Heal Slow Coalition. Here are your hosts for Living the Run, Ryan Ferran and Paul Tarek. And welcome back to Living the Run Health and Fitness. Great to be back. We've been off the past two weeks because of the World Series. A pretty good World Series indeed. Not a shame to be bumped by that, especially Game 6. That was a beauty. Uh, congrats to the Cardinals for winning it all. Larissa trots off into the sunset. But much more important things to get to here on Living the Run. We're back after a couple weeks off. Paul Tarek. Still out, taking care of business. He's working. So he is excused. We miss him. Hopefully he'll be back next week in studio with us. Max Woodcock, our producer, is here, and he will be uh, chiming in, as always. So we appreciate that. Coming up on Living the Run Health and Fitness tonight, the benefits of exercise. One author and nutritionist says lack of exercise actually may be a greater health risk than smoking. How about that? One of the benefits listed that we will read to you, it can boost your sex life. That's just one of many. That's why we're here. Not to boost, Max, don't stop laughing. Not, not to boost your sex life, Max, but to the benefits of exercise. We're here to let you know about them and why you should be out there living the run. For the first time ever, a 100-year-old has completed a marathon. This guy didn't start running until... Max, you want to take a guess when he started running? Like 75. Very good guess. 80 years old, he didn't start running. He's now completed eight marathons. Oh, wow. It is never too late. 80 years old and starts running. We'll let you know why he started, too. Pretty interesting story about that. Should you or can you work out while you are sick? The cold and flu season is fastly approaching. So we'll let you know what the Mayo Clinic has to say about that and what advice they give about working out, running, exercising while you are a bit under the weather. Since we've been gone, we missed Paul's birthday. Happy birthday to the Olympian, Paul Anthony Tarek. Happy birthday, big guy. You know how everyone writes, you know, on Facebook pages, you know, happy birthday, and you get, you know, 100, you know, generic happy birthday comments. Quite a bit of friends there for 100, huh? Yeah, well, that's Paul. That's the Olympian. Me, I get like two. My mom, my dad, and that's about it. I like it. What do you think I wrote on Paul's wall for his birthday? One word. One word only. What do you think that word was? Ego. (laughs) No, (laughs) that's a good guess as well. I just wrote old. Just old and left it at that. How old is the uh, former Olympian there? <laughs> oh, member Max. He's, not, he's never a former Olympian. Despite what our commercial says on ESPN when I wrote that over a year and a half ago, it says former Olympian. But Paul quickly corrected us. I believe show number one <laughs> said there is no such thing as a former Olympian. Once an Olympian, always an Olympian. I guess when that's kind of the highlight there, you got to just hold on for everything that's oh, worth. I totally would. If I went to an Olympics, I would just say, you know. I would be the Olympian, not just <laughs> exactly. an Olympian. Like the Ohio State. I am the Olympian. The one, the only, the best. So happy birthday to Paul. He's old, getting older, getting more and more out of shape, and we think it's hilarious. Happy birthday, big guy. We'll see you next week. Max went on a little trip. Thank goodness we were canceled. The show would have probably shut down anyway. You weren't here. We'll get to that in a moment. Where... Where the world traveler went this time, high school football players cramping up a little too much for me. I've been covering the high school football games, and Max has been out there for ESPN covering football as well. And uh, I'll get his thoughts, but I've seen this year, I think, what I would call 
an excessive amount of football players cramping. And I'm not saying, you know, injuries, that sort of thing happens. But, you know, when you see the guy out there stretching the leg, usually you see that in Texas in July. But it is San Luis Obispo at 7 o'clock at night, and I've seen a lot of kids cramping, and it's kind of shocking to me. Is that bad diet? Coincidence? Is that normal? Am I just noticing it more? What is that all about? But I've seen it, and it's just... I don't know if it's too many rock stars and Cokes at lunchtime or is it just one of those things that happens once in a while. But I've seen it probably five, six times this year where a player has to come off the field or the trainer has to run out there because the kid, you know, you see it. The kid's in agony and just screaming and the, the other player or trainer lifts his leg and stretches it out and then they're okay afterwards, but it's one of those painful things. Uh, so your thoughts on that will take them or on any topic we're talking about tonight. You can text the show 805-242-1280. 242-1280, or you can email the show, radio at livingtherun.com. And listening to the Sports Bite, my favorite show here on ESPN 1280, they were talking to Cal Poly football coach, as they do every Wednesday, Alice and Wallace, Tim Walsh. And Wallace brought up conditioning, because Cal Poly, if you saw that game, uh, first half didn't look so good. Second half, they looked fantastic. And uh, Coach Walsh was talking about, you know, conditioning is a big part of what they do, obviously, but he also talked about Mentally conditioning themselves, and uh, they were they had everything in the second half, and it was a total 180. Uh, that was a great game. They were down 17-0 at the half, and just looked, you know, it was only 17 points they were down, and there's been way bigger comebacks, but offensively they just did not look good. And you, you were thinking, man, 17 points isn't a lot, but still the way they look, you know, you didn't have much hope. But second half they came out and they looked very good. Got a late field goal and beat South Dakota by three. Uh, so they're at UC Davis. But they were talking about conditioning and uh, that aspect. So I'm curious to know your thoughts on the high school football players, if I've just seen pretty much every player that is cramped <laughs> this year, or is it happening a little too much, and is there a reason behind it? We'll also have your Malahi Ford text trivia contest. We will get to that. Uh, but before we do all that, Max, overseas, Let's get your thoughts on the high school football players. You're out there every week at a game of the week for ESPN Radio. Uh, have you seen a lot of cramping out there this year from your perspective? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm I, kind of under the same sense as you is that you get out there and you're watching it and it seems like every other play some kid goes down just clutching the calves or the hamstring. And, and after, you know, it, it would be fine if it was fourth quarter and it was 90 plus degrees outside and it was sunny. But it's, like you said, it's a cool evening. It's the Central Coast. There's not really any heat to battle with, which is one of the normal causes of cramping, I feel. And you, you, you kind of got to take into consideration that these are high school kids, and for that whole day, they spent their day eating meals at high school. And I don't know about you, but my meals at high school didn't consist of much <laughs> as far as health was concerned. There was a lot of Coke drinking, a lot of energy drinks, a lot of just kind of junk food full of sugar. And so when that's the kind of stuff you are fueling your body with prior to a game, it's not surprising that these kids are going down like flies. You're right. I think, you know, it is, there's got to be something to it. I mean, and I ate like junk in high school too. I had the soda, the pizza. I mean, I was not fueling myself up. You know, what we thought was fueling ourselves up before a big soccer game or something like that, baseball, we, you know, we'd stuff ourselves with pasta. And that's not exactly the smartest thing to do either. But that was like us being healthy. But, you know, we're throwing down Cokes with it, you know, you know, three Snickers afterwards. And before the game, we'd pop four Advil and think everything would be fine. <laughs> so, you know, so that's our pregame routine. But still, maybe my memory is bad now that I am getting up in my old age. But I honestly have yet, and I'm, you know, I'll say I'm over 30. Let you, <laughs> let you guess that one. But I still haven't had one of those bad knock on wood, muscle cramps yet. If you're having them in high school, that, I mean, and the kids are in shape. It's not like big uh, linemen are coming. It's, you know, it's just startling to me that these kids are going down with all these cramps. And, you know, as we talked about, we both hit on, it's San Luis Obispo. It's like a game high temperature is like 70 degrees. It's getting into the winter months. And these, uh, I just, I, I don't get it. So we'll take your thoughts, 805-242-1280. If you're seeing what, Max and I are seeing, and what in the world is the reason behind it? I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I used to play a lot of soccer, even played some football too in high school, and I've got one serious cramp in my whole life, and I know it was because that day I just didn't drink any water mm. out of stupidity more than anything, and I, 
started feeling a little bit towards the beginning of the game, and then sure enough, fourth quarter, I was on a breakaway drive, and the guy <laughs> took me out from behind, and I got a PK, but I was cramping so bad that I couldn't even take it. So I asked my buddy to take it, kicks it wide left, we lose the game. But uh, just just didn't really understand why, as I was watching these football games, that these players are going down, and they're not just going down once, they'll cramp up, they'll come back in four or five plays later, and they'll cramp up again and go out again. And it, it makes me wonder, are they not getting enough water on the sidelines? Is it a product of from birth growing up with such a poor diet? I, I don't know what it is, but I'm right there with you and not really understanding what could be causing so much at this point. And I'm wondering if it's, you know, some kids are, some people in general are more prone to getting them just because of genetics or whatever. Uh, but there's definitely something to it. And, you know, again, my memory could be bad, but I do not remember my teammates cramping up. I mean nowhere close to what I'm seeing. And again, it's not everybody. It's a few kids. But I mean, one or two kids a game is, you know, probably 200% more than I'm used to seeing, especially in years past. It's just, maybe I'm noticing it more. I don't know. We'll take your text. Do not call. <laughs> I love when they call. Call the call the number. Don't call it. We'll take your text. 805-242-1280. Uh, we got one in from Phil and Atascadero. He says, not sure what it is, but I see a lot of rock stars in athletes hands these days, but I too have seen the cramping. Phil and Atascadero weighing in. 805-242-1280. All right, Max, before the break, overseas trip. Where'd you go? Are you still hungover? Um, <laughs> how's the recovery going? Well, I had the pleasure of visiting the Emerald Isle, the lovely Ireland, and Ooh, uh, nice. my sister is actually over there studying abroad right now, so my family, as per tradition, we all go out and visit whoever's studying abroad, and so we all went out and visited her for about 11 days, and we got to spend some time in Dublin and Galway and do some tri visiting down on the south coast and then up into Northern Ireland where they use the pound. Interesting how you got to cross over currencies while you're on the train. Mm. Uh, but it was very gorgeous. They say it's the land of 40 shades of green, and I would beg to differ. I'd say there's quite a few more because everything is green, and it's all a different form of green, and it's it's pretty gorgeous. A lot of, a lot of Guinness drinking. I am a little still hungover, but I'd say that's more from jet lag than it is from the alcohol. I uh, got to visit a few whiskey distilleries, which is kind of one of those things that Ireland is famous for. I went to the Bush Mills and the Jameson distilleries. And oh, very that was cool. Very informative as well as tasty. Uh, but yeah, it's just gorgeous, and I'd say my favorite part of the whole trip with Ireland is the people. I mean, absolutely some phenomenal people. They're all incredibly helpful. They all have a great story to tell, and they're all extremely proud to be Irish. So it was quite a journey. I'm, hash I'm half Irish, so my people, thank you. You're kind of As am I. As am I. <laughs> I've never been over there, though, and I, you know, I don't, you know. I would highly recommend it. It's, if, if for nothing else, just go to hang out with the people, because they're amazing, and they really, they truly make the trip worthwhile. How much Irish are you? I am half. My dad's real dad's last name is Riley, and then his stepdad's Woodcock, so I'm actually a Riley at heart. Nice. Now, what do they eat over there? How's the diet, and what are you, uh, what are you <laughs> smashing down between Guinnesses? Potatoes. Yeah. Like all, all variations. You got the whole ones, you got the fried ones, you got the chips, you got everything potato-related, and then a lot of meat, a lot of lamb, a lot of beef, and... Oh, they have this thing called traditional Irish stew, which is, it's either a beef or a lamb, but it's in like a, an onion jus with some potatoes. It's, wow. it's amazing. It's truly heavenly. Fruits, vegetables, they exist over there or what? Uh, not that I saw. Vegetables, <laughs> yes. Root vegetables, lots of carrots, lots of onions, uh, right. potato, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's pretty limited. You, I saw one farmer's market, and it, it wasn't anything to compare with San Luis Obispo's farmer's market. But it's nice to see. You know, you get some, some colorful. I think I saw a few squash out there. And, nice. Uh, there was actually a breakthrough while I was there. They figured out how to use the west side of the island, which is predominantly all rock. So there's, not, there's almost no soil with yeah. which to work and grow with. And they figured a way to incorporate some form of agriculture out there while I was there. And so the people were pretty up in arms and excited about that. Very cool. Another cool thing that I noticed that is similar over here is that whole Occupy thing. That we got going on against the stock exchange and the stock exchangers. Yes. It's big everywhere over there, too. Even these small little towns you go to, there's, there's at least a half dozen kids in tents kind of occupying and having a great time. Good for them. Who needs vegetables when you can occupy and drink Guinness all day? Oh, and the Guinness is so much better over there. That's what I hear. I've heard that. And Guinness is, you know, it's one of those. You know what's amazing about Guinness? The calories in it are way lower than people think. People think, you know, it's like 
maple syrup, and it's so thick. It's only, I want to—I don't know off the top of my hand, and we can look it up between uh, breaks, but I think it's like 120, 130 calories. It's under 150, I know that. Yeah, and some, I mean, some of those beers, some of those dark beers, uh, some of the Sierra Nevadas and stuff are way, like triple Yeah, pushing that. 300. <laughs> yeah, so it's Guinness is, while people stay away from it because they think it has a ton of calories, it actually doesn't. The reason Guinness is so thick in, fl- like in texture is because it's not your normal carbonated beer. It's a nitrous beer. And what that means is when you drink a beer, that beer is put into a bottle and left with a little sugar for the yeast to go ahead and carbon dioxide make it carbonated. Guinness has nitrous pumped into it. So that's where you see that. that have you ever watched a Guinness poured from tap? It's yeah. kind of got that like silky texture flowing down, and that's the nitrous working its way through. Very interesting. All right, coming up after the break, the benefits of exercise. We'll talk more about the first centenarian to run a marathon. And high school football players cramping up. We'll take your thoughts. Again, text the number. Please do not call. It is 805-242-1280. Feel free to text 242-1280. Or you can send us an email, radio at livingtherun.com. Before we go to break, though, Malahi 4 Text Trivia Contest. Malahi4.com, where good things are happening. The 100-year-old... What was his time in the marathon? 100 years old, what was his time? Closest to will win an Artie's Pilates Power Pack. Closest to will win an Artie's Pilates Power Pack. 805-242-1280, 100 years old, what was the dude's time? Living the Run Health and Fitness Radio, back after this. You're listening to Living the Run on ESPN Radio 1280 The Ticket. Do you want to take a gym class but don't have the time? Or maybe you just don't want that smelly guy dressed in his 80s gear hovering over you in yoga class? Again, WeStreamFitness.com has more than 200 real-life gym classes that we shot and recorded, and they're available to you whenever and wherever you can log on. Choose from Pilates, yoga, Zumba, kickboxing, aerobics, or our always popular tab class, thighs, abs, and booty. Plus, WeStreamFitness.com offers live chats with trainers and other wellness experts. Full access is all yours for just $15 a month. So whether you're tired of that same old boring workout DVD or you're tired of smelly yoga guy, Check out WeStreamFitness.com. We stream to keep you lean. If you're on the bench, get on the phone to a sports medicine specialist at Sierra Vista Regional Medical Center. Call us if it's torn, broken, strained, sprained, aggravated, aching, pulled, bruised, swollen, dislocated, or hyperextended. Sierra Vista Sports Medicine Specialists. For a free physician referral, call 800-483-6387. That's 800-483-6387. Sierra Vista Regional Medical Center. Top rate from top to bottom. So, where's the best place to be this summer? Oh, I can answer that. Out front, leading the way with Ford during the best place to be sales event. Ford is only the best selling brand in America. Cars, trucks, SUVs, crossovers, everything you'd expect from a leader. They've got the Explorer, the brand new Focus, the Fiesta, the Fusion, the Taurus, all with innovative technology. Sync, EcoBoost, Active Park Assist. Of course, everything is very fuel efficient. I'm telling you, the Ford best place to be sales event now happening at Malahi Ford in the village of Arroyo Grande. It really is the best place to be. What's up? AJ Allmendinger here. When I'm on track, there's nothing more important than having my car in tip-top shape. And you shouldn't settle for anything less either. That's why I recommend taking your vehicle to Malahi Ford for all your servicing needs. Whether it's an oil change, tune-up, new tires, or major repair work, Malahi Ford is the team you want handling your vehicle. So visit Malahi Ford in the village of Royal Grand and you'll be a winner too. Malahi Ford, where good things are happening. Stop by today. Artie's Pilates Studio in Pismo Beach is a Pilates-only studio that uses the full line of Pilates apparatus. Whether you're rehabbing an injury, want to strengthen your core, relieve back pain, or just increase your energy and overall fitness, Artie's Pilates Studio has it all, including a full staff of trainers who are nationally certified. They offer private and semi-private lessons, plus group classes on the Pilates Reformer. Artie is even certified as a Pilates golf conditioning specialist. Artie's Pilates Studio in Pismo Beach. Call 773-3863. 
A preventable epidemic in the U.S. is killing our family, friends, neighbors, and children. Over two-thirds of American adults and 34% of kids are overweight or obese, which can lead to diabetes, heart disease, and premature death. 56% of adults and 32% of 5th, 7th, and 9th graders in Slow County are overweight or obese. Healthy Eating Active Living San Luis Obispo Coalition, or Heal Slow, wants to reverse that trend in Slow County. What can you do? Help us fight the epidemic by joining Heal Slow or visiting www.healslow.com for resources or more information. Together we can work towards a healthier and brighter future for ourselves, our loved ones, and our children. We're back with Living the Run. Here are your hosts, Ryan Ferran and Paul Tarek. Getting thirsty for a Guinness. Living the Run Health and Fitness Radio. Ryan Ferran, Max Woodcock. With you, Paul Tarek, the birthday boy, the Olympian. Not here. Hopefully he will be kind enough and join us next week. He's working. He's excused. He's a good guy. Plenty of text coming in on the high school athletes cramping. And we have a consensus, and it's a good theory, and one I think is probably uh, correct. We were talking about the rock stars and the energy drinks, and Max, we're getting a lot of text in saying uh, the caffeine is what is seriously dehydrating these kids. And I, it was so funny, I picked up this guy's rock star at work today, and it's kind of just joking around with them. And everyone thinks I'm the health and fitness, like, you know, stickler. And, you know, I eat junk food, and I eat fast food. I just try to do it in moderation, and I don't tell you know I don't tell people what to eat or drink. Especially you know I'll joke with somebody if I know them, but I don't want to be that guy you know preaching and all this stuff. You know I eat junk too. I just try to limit it, and you know I have cravings that you know I'll go through a bo- large box of milk duds. And Halloween was I was not very good. Yeah, especially with Halloween just <laughs> oh, passed. Man. There's just so much candy around the office, and everyone's ridiculous. Just, that's what everyone brings in. They're like four bags of candy. So I have a colleague who's pretty health nut too, and even he said. It's hard to resist yeah. when it's sitting right in front of you. I mean, you got to do it. So I was just joking with this guy at work today, and I picked up his rock star. And he had one of the sugar-free ones that, you know, it's actually, you know, relatively healthier. So I'm like, oh, look at the sugar. And, you know, he had just nothing. There's like three grams or something. But then the caffeine was 80 milligrams per serving. And those things have, you know, two servings minimum. 160. And... You know, I think people are texting in. They're saying it's the uh, dehydration from the caffeine. And I think they're right. Because even the kids, you know, like I said, these are not, for the most part, big offensive linemen that I'm seeing, you know, needing trainers to, you know, rip their leg behind their neck to stretch them out again to get them back out there. It's, you know, wide receivers and, you know, running backs and cornerbacks and stuff like that. But, yeah, that caffeine. And, I, you know, a lot of the kids, and I talked to a coach, and we're not naming names or players or schools or anything. Uh, it's not really important, but you know, one of the coaches I talked to is like, you know, the energy drinks are everywhere. They're out of hand. And one guy texted in one guy or mom, I didn't read the whole thing, but talking about, you know, he has a, as a son D one athlete and he had terrible cramps in high school. He ripped the energy drinks out of his hands and, uh, started making them drink water. And obviously what happens? They go away. Some good parenting right there. Yeah, so we appreciate the text. We we really do because you know your insights are uh, what help the show out. And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, people are hitting it on the head. It's the it's the caffeine, and then mix that with uh, all the other junk. But and a lot of people, you know, caffeine's one of those things. I see a lot of articles, you know, boasting the benefits of caffeine, and you know there are some very good things. But when like anything in excess, I mean, t- too much water will kill you. You know, so keep that in mind. Uh, too much of anything is not a good thing. And, you know, there are benefits of caffeine, speeding up your metabolism for weight loss. And uh, there's some cancer-fighting properties in them, according to some studies and that sort of thing. But, yeah, too much, not a good thing. Thanks for your text. You can uh, still weigh in on the Malahi Ford text trivia and on any topic we're hitting on, 805-242-1280. 100 years old. I think most of us are just hoping, praying we're somewhat coherent. Max says he doesn't even want to be around when he's 100. But if you're... See, here's the thing, though. You're associating with 100 with being, you know, drooling, 
nursing home, needing, lacking the needing physical help. capabilities. Right. But if you're 100 healthy, walking and running, don't need assistance, why not be around? Have a good time. You're feeling good, looking good. This guy, Faju Singh, 100 years old, recently ran a full marathon in Toronto. We'll get to his time. Next break, that's our Malahi Ford text trivia. What is his time? 805-242-1280. Closest to will win an Artie's Pilates Power Pack, valued at 200 bucks. Check out Artie's on Facebook or artiespilates.com. His eighth marathon started running when he was 80 years old. He said completing this marathon and setting, obviously, a record, being the only... 100-year-old to do such a crazy thing uh, was like getting married again. Five feet, eight inches, weighs 115 pounds. Tiny. He said his secret is that he eats a light vegetarian diet of mainly tea, toast, and curry. Tea, toast, and curry. That's all I'm going to eat for four, four years now. Tea, toast, and curry. Uh, he said the article doesn't go into too much depth of why he started running, but it says about 80 years old, uh, he lost his wife and child in tragic circumstances. So can you imagine 80 years old getting motivated, that motivated and able? So, I mean, for some people that are... 50. Forget 50. Some people that are 22 and overweight can't even walk around the block. 100 years old running a marathon? That is just, I mean, unbelievable. So kudos to him. So our Malahi Vortex trivia, what is the time? And it's an interesting time because, obviously, (laughs) he's not the fastest guy out there. And typically, they would close down the course uh, if you had this time because traffic and those sort of things. There's time limits with marathons. You can't be out there all day. Safety issue and you know you can't shut down cities for the entire weekend. So that being said, it is a time after a typical marathon course would be shut down. Closest to will win an Artie's Pilates Power Pack. Also on our Facebook page, a couple of interesting stories that we're not going to dive too deep into, but I'll mention them. A uh, naked marathon runner Gets tased and banned from the Ohio Marathon. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh. funny. Have you heard of the, uh, shoot, oh, okay, the Bay to Breakers in San Francisco? Absolutely. Okay, so I have never run it. I'm from the Bay Area. Need to run it, like, immediately. I think it's a seven-mile run. And everything I hear about the Bay to Breakers is great costumes and nudity, naked, nudity, naked. And so I tweeted out one day. I, I sent out the link to this article and said, you know, the guy should run the Bay to Breakers. It seems like it's almost... You know, an acceptable thing in San Francisco where they run the Beta Breakers. And the Beta Breakers tweets back, uh, we don't condone running naked in our race. <laughs> Something like that. They may not condone it, but they certainly allow it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you do to stop it, though? I mean, how do you... And it's it's groups of people, like 20 groups, right. 20 people in a group. They're all naked. And what are you going to tell them all to stop? They're just going to keep on running. And the interesting thing about this story, which caught my eye, was the guy got tased. <laughs> I mean, is there somebody like, I'm not touching him, but we need to get him out of here? Or, so embarrassing. Or, I mean, or what? And then he got banned from the marathon forever. Uh, that's on our Facebook page if you want to check it out. Uh, there's also a cool study a friend of mine sent me yesterday, and it's an article that supplements. I mean, it is a billion-dollar industry. I take them. You probably take them, whether it's vitamin C, aloe vera, kava, some kind of tea or whatever. We're spending millions, billions of dollars on it. So there's an article taking the research behind these and these studies and kind of ranking where supplements, you know, if they're worth your money, not worth your money, and they have a whole rating scale. It's kind of a cool little visual bubble graph that they did. Uh, So it's kind of interesting to see where some of the different supplements rank according to effectiveness uh, to this study, which on the surface it seems to be pretty amazing, but one thing that drives me crazy about health and fitness, and I talked about this you know, several times in this show, is that there's one study that says vitamin C is the greatest thing in the earth, and there's two more that says it's the worst, 
And then there's three more studies contradicting the two previous studies. So it's really hard to get a hand on what's good, what's not good. And, you know, these things, some of them are pretty expensive, but some of the claims and marketing behind them, it's like if you don't take it, you're going to die tomorrow. So we all start, you know, popping supplements down our mouth. That's kind of one of the, I wouldn't say downfalls, but the negatives to nutritionism science is I feel like every five years, what they found out five years ago is now wrong. So, I mean, I remember when butter was terrible, but margarine was great. Then margarine was the worst thing ever, and it's back to butter. Exactly. And everything kind of changes all the time. And like you said, one study you'll say it's the best. The next study you'll say it's the worst. And it's how can two people conducting a study come up with totally different results? You got to think who's paying those people to make those <laughs> studies. Uh, but I'm curious, what was the, what they quote unquote called the most beneficial of the supplements? I'll have to pull that up, but I know there's a few that they, according to the research, and they looked at several different studies and did a whole thing, but I'll pull it up here in a minute. But it was pretty interesting. Do you take any supplements? Uh... I wouldn't necessarily call it a supplement, but one thing I have started taking is probiotics because I do have quite a bit of stomach issues and it's one of those things where I could change my diet to make it all better, but as with you, Taco Bell is an addiction. It's not a choice. <laughs> exactly. So I, I find myself frequently visiting locations that don't exactly serve the healthiest of culinary choices. So probiotics is something that kind of works with my stomach uh, to help prevent it from just kind of getting that queasy feeling and overabundance of stomach acid and stuff like that. So that's one thing I take on a regular basis. Do you think it works? Uh, yes, I do. I was as skeptical as skeptical could be. My sister's big into taking them, and her and my mom kind of ganged up on me and said, <laughs> you're going to take them now. And so I started taking them, and within about five, six days, I started noticing that on mornings where I would have something bad the night before, where I would normally wake up with just an awful feeling in my stomach and a lot of stomach acid, I... It didn't even dawn on me that those things were possible, it, and I, I didn't really notice it until about 10 days later when I was like, hey, I, I haven't really experienced any problems with my stomach in about four or five days now. I wonder if this is why, and so I've been taking them, and now I find myself only with stomach problems on night where I did a little little too much fun having the night before. So, so basically, you're just masking your... Taco Bell and drinking binges with probiotics. Not at all. Great advice, Max. We not appreciate at all. That. I'm not masking anything. I'm still <laughs> eating very terrible food, and it's not <laughs> beneficial for the body at all. But what I'm doing is I'm alleviating some of the pain that I go through the next morning. So if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. But According to this study, probiotics actually is one of the highest rated as far as effectiveness supplements. It's actually top of the list. Folic acid... And this also, because, you know, a lot of supplements claim to do many, many things. So this lists them in a little bubble and says what they are effective for. Uh, probiotics, digestive health. So it says it's actually one of the most effective supplements for digestive health. Green tea, there's, I've read a million articles. Casey Bryant, one of our bloggers, has written about green tea on livingtherun.com. Uh, green tea, I try to drink it as often as possible because I've heard nothing but great things and I haven't seen any research to contradict that. Uh, but green tea is very effective for cholesterol. It uh, doesn't list any of the other things up here, but green tea is also up there. Folic acid is very high on the list for birth defects. Uh, selenium is up there. Vitamin D is up there for general health, cancer prevention. Go get some sun, people. There you go. St. John's wort is up there for depression. Uh, there's, some, there's a lot of up here, so I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, valerian is up there for sleep and anxiety. Uh, some of the ones under the, they have a, a, what they call a worth it line. Is it worth it? Some of the ones under vitamin C. And I've heard more good things than bad about vitamin C. It's not too far under the worth it line. So there's some, it's not like bad, which at the very bottom, like vitamin A maybe. Uh, but I definitely take, try to get as much vitamin C as I can. I mean, I, I wonder if vitamin C alone is all that it kind of promotes itself to be, or if it's something about the vitamin C working with the enzymes in fruits and things like that that you eat that True. creates that beneficial side effect. But, I mean, I, I, I feel like some of those things you listed at the top aren't easily received in dietary things, like selenium. Where do you get selenium in your diet? Is that something you have to take as a supplement? I, I want to say fish, but I'm not positive off the top of my head. And same with probiotics. I mean, I don't think that's something you can get in, like, a food or something like that. That's something Yogurt, that's, dairy. Okay, there you go. 
But it, it seems to me like a lot of these things can be obtained through diet. Mm-hmm. So just by choosing certain food groups to, you know, supplementing yourself with the supplements. That exactly. And this, this book, which we're going to touch about, uh, talk about next break, Never Be Sick Again by Raymond Francis. I actually interviewed him about a year and a half ago. Uh, it's a great interview <coughs> on, on our uh, Living the Run com a podcast on there he says uh, vitamin C actually saved his life he was on his deathbed ill as can be and he was an MIT guy biologist background and remembered studying back in the day at MIT the benefits of heavy doses of vitamin C so he was like what the heck I'm about to go <laughs> took large doses of vitamin C turned his life around uh, very interesting read never be sick again his book we'll talk a little bit more about that after the break and the benefits of exercise. Malahi Ford text trivia, 805-242-1280. 242-1280. What was the time of the 100-year-old guy who finished a marathon in Toronto a few weeks ago? What, is it, what was his time? 242-1280. We'll be right back on Living the Run Health and Fitness Radio. You're listening to Living the Run on ESPN Radio, 1280 The Ticket. So, where's the best place to be this summer? Oh, I can answer that. Out front, leading the way with Ford during the best place to be sales event. Ford is only the best-selling brand in America. Cars, trucks, SUVs, crossovers, everything you'd expect from a leader. They've got the Explorer, the brand new Focus, the Fiesta, the Fusion, the Taurus, all with innovative technology. Sync, EcoBoost, Active Park Assist. Of course, everything is very fuel efficient. I'm telling you, the Ford best place to be sales event now happening at Malahi Ford in the village of Arroyo Grande. It really is the best place to be. What's up? AJ Allmendinger here. When I'm on track, there's nothing more important than having my car in tip-top shape. And you shouldn't settle for anything less either. That's why I recommend taking your vehicle to Malahi Ford for all your servicing needs. Whether it's an oil change, tune-up, new tires, or major repair work, Malahi Ford is the team you want handling your vehicle. So visit Malahi Ford in the village of Royal Grande and you'll be a winner too. Malahi Ford, where 